game week number what seven, I believe. Um, decided to wear a hat today uh, because um, my hair was awful, and I just kind of got home from work, and I was like, I'm not in the mood to, you know, go grab a shower and you know wait for my hair to dry and then do all the recording. So I was like, let's sort of wear a hat. You'll probably see that frequently. Um, so. Basically, let's have a look at how we did uh, this week. So, I suppose I should go to points first. That would probably be quite useful. 65 points this week. The average was 50. The highest was 131. Uh, with a game week rank under a million. Don't quite know how that works, but anyway. Uh, and I did two transfers. So, who were the transfers and how did we do? Well... Loris in goal, which uh, I actually did before Spurs' um, Champions League game against Barcelona, because I was like, I've been saying for weeks I need to change the hair, and, um, you know, with how Man United have been performing recently, and I was like, Spurs have got Cardiff at home, plus I think Spurs, Loris as a goalkeeper is pretty good, um, and then the Barcelona game happened, and I was like, oh god, have I made a terrible mistake here, um, so I might transfer him out again, but he did get me nine points. So, you know, I can't really argue with that, can I? Um, nine points, clean sheet. It was great. Trippier as well. Uh, clean sheet. I think did he um, get uh, an assist? No, just the clean sheet. Okay, still seven points for the clean sheet. It's great. Wan Bissaka. Not doing just two points for him. Really, not doing too good. And Van Dijk got the clean sheet. Luckily, you don't get anything for giving away a penalty. <laughs> Weirdly. Um, but yeah, uh, he got clean sheet as well, which I was very happy with. So those three there, obviously, contributing well. Obviously, the guy who contributed the most was Hazard, who uh, continues to impress in the Premier League. Seven goals so far this season. Uh, a goal, an assist, and a clean sheet. Plus, he was my captain, led to 28 points. That's really good. I don't know if he was the top performing guy uh, this week. Um, where is it? We can check that. Just over here. So, Doherty, I think, with 15, and Aubameyang with 15 were the two highest. But other than that, I don't think many people would have had um, Doherty as their uh, captain. I think a few might have had Aubameyang, but otherwise, I guess Hazard was a, a pretty good choice. Um, for that, I transferred in William instead of, I think it was Mane, yeah it was Mane, uh, I figured that he hasn't really been in form, and with Chelsea playing Southampton, I expected Chelsea to win that game comfortably, and I think William has done okay this season, uh, he's only scored one goal, got two assists, so maybe I was wrong, um, <laughs> but uh, I thought he'd done okay this season, and I thought he might do alright in this one. He's played most of the games, to be fair, hasn't he? Maybe I'll transfer him out again. Uh, we'll see. Uh, Bernardo Silva, I still had him. I didn't really know how the Liverpool-Man City game was going to go. I don't think anyone really knew how it was going to go and probably didn't expect the 0-0 draw we did get. Um, but uh, I like Bernardo Silva this season. I think he's doing really well, so uh, I wanted to keep him in there. Jorginho, um, again, not really doing scoring many points like he's just a guy who's solid isn't he like he'll get you three points most weeks really other than that not much um but obviously his scoring ability in or his points ability in fantasy football is not a correlation to his ability on the football pitch you know it's just he's one of those players you know i guess maybe somebody like um pirlo maybe when he was at ac milan or um Claude McAlealy or someone like that wouldn't get many points. Like Kante doesn't get many points, but clearly he's an incredibly important player on the pitch. It's just the way fantasy football is. Madison not doing too much, which was a bit disappointing. I, I kind of thought he might do something against Everton. I don't even get me started on Crystal Palace and Aguero not doing anything either. Um, on the bench, uh, I didn't think Mendy was going to play. I don't think I would have subbed him in even if I knew he did. Obviously, there's five points, which lost I guess in a way Ings and Arnold Arnold didn't play um, 
so it actually subbed in. Sorry, it had Arnold playing, I think, and Van Dyke was on the bench. That's right, Van Dyke was on the bench because he was injured, and I didn't think he was going to play. So I put in Arnold instead, but it subbed them over because Van Dyke did play, obviously. So that was good, yeah, there you go, confirmation of that. So, yeah, pretty happy with that in terms of the league um, for the Plays Cup. Uh, third place, um, Detective Spooner going above me. Although it does say um, I've gone up, but I swear I was second last week. Um, and then uh, screaming out in front with 89 points. That's really good. Is that the highest this week? 78 there from Jack. Uh, uh, let's have a look at this team. You get that many points. Patricio, Robertson, Alonso, Hazard, Captain, yeah. Uh, Wilson, wow, 14 points. Charleston, Trippier, yeah, that's good. That's a real solid, solid team. Um, and then 78, Hazard, Captain. By any chance, you know, Hazard, Captain. Lacazette, Wilson, yeah, cool. Um, Freya, Foster, yeah, solid. Solid. A few points lost on the bench. I guess everybody thought Mendy wasn't going to play, to be fair. Um, so yeah, not too bad. Otherwise, I think everybody had a fairly solid week. I think everyone scored above the average here, apart from um, Fox in the Box, uh, really, but wasn't too far off, so not too bad. I did notice that um, when I clicked on this before and checked for September, I had the highest score in September, so I was happy with that. Uh, August, uh, I was not the highest score in August. October so far, I am fourth in October. Well, I guess we've only had one week of October, haven't we? So yeah, that's a bit pointless. But yeah, so far so good, I guess. Um, in terms of where we are in the leagues, so I'm, I'm top one thousand eight hundred thirty nine in Crystal Palace, top one hundred eleven thousand in, in for England, and under five hundred thousand is my aim. And so far, so good, doing pretty well. Like, maybe I should adjust that to top uh, quarter of a million, 250,000. I'd be really, really happy with that, actually. Um, I think that I'd be pretty proud of that if that finished up like that. But it's a long season, yeah. This is what game week eight, sorry, not game week seven. Um, and so many, 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 many game weeks, 30 more, in fact, I think, isn't it? Unless sometimes maybe they do two, one, I don't know, but probably about another 30 to go. Um, so we'll see. Um, so let's have a look at the games and, and what happened because I think it was a, it was one of those weeks where one or two games just dominate the headlines and you kind of forgot about everything else. You know, we had a Friday night game, Brighton and West Ham, Murray scoring the goal. Um, I, I look at Murray and I'm like, why did we sell you? <laughs> I think he would be doing so well right now at Crystal Palace. Like he's doing really well at Brighton, like obviously. Um, but I feel like if he had the service from Zaha, Townsend, oh man, that, I, I really genuinely feel like that was a massive mistake, us selling him. Um, somebody did a, a, a piece on Twitter, or it wasn't really a piece, but like a thread on Twitter saying that like, no other team in the Premier League has had so many what they call banter strikers as Crystal Palace, i.e. strikers who um, work really hard just never score and the list was ridiculous like honestly I looked at it and I was like yeah Bristol Palace have had so many bad strikers and it, what's funny is that when we signed Benteke I thought that was it you know that was it we're gonna um, you know we've actually spent some money on a striker we're not just trying to get like Arsenal cast offs or loan strikers or anything like that we've actually gone out and identified what we needed and brought a proven Premier League striker and it's turned out badly for us so god knows what happens in there but uh, anyway I was talking about Brighton and yeah I think West Ham will be a little bit disappointed with this after a couple of good results recently um, if we actually just open that in a new tab a couple of um, really good results for them recently I think they'll be really disappointed to have lost that game and you know I think you can't get ahead of yourselves too much in the Premier League you know we are eight games in and they've got seven points and, and they're above, you know, those guys and, you know, they're four points above the, the relegation zone. I think everybody thought everything's going to be all right now. West Ham sorting themselves out. They're going to rise up. But, um, 
you've got to fight in this league every single game. You know, no one is safe. No one is safe. They've got Spurs next as a tough game. So I think they'll be super disappointed with that, really. Um, but a uh, good win for Brighton. You know, Brighton are just that team who, uh, so, you know, sometimes you think, oh, they're in trouble. You know, they're on a bad run here. You know, haven't won in X amount of games and stuff like that. And West Ham are on form and they do well at home, Brighton. Like I, they're, they're a really good home side. Like I wish Crystal Palace were <laughs> as good as them at home. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad. I, I really want to see Brighton stay in the Premier League. I, I know there's sort of always that sort of like um, weird animosity between or rivalry between Palace and, and Brighton. And I love uh, uh, football. Like rivalries are always for me, unless you're perhaps in the same city. Um, I feel they're always a little bit, like, dumb. You know, Everton, Liverpool, Manchester United, Man City, um, you know, Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham, uh, those kind of, you know, people I kind of understand because they're they're very local to each other. Newcastle, Sunderland, Middlesbrough, uh, you know, Birmingham, West Brom, Aston Villa. Uh, I just kind of feel sometimes, unless two teams have been maybe going at it for a long time, like Man United and Liverpool, I've got this rivalry, but um, Liverpool, it, it kind of built up around the Alex Ferguson era, and the thing was, like, it was Alex Ferguson kind of baiting Liverpool, and but Liverpool were never really challenging them in the league that much, so it always felt a bit fake. Um, but anyway, that's, you know, that's how it is. Um, never tried to really understand football rivalries, because I don't think half the people who have them even understand it, so... Burnley Huddersfield at 1 1. I mean, this probably had draw written all over it, or home win, probably. So I guess it's a good result for uh, Huddersfield. Huddersfield, Newcastle, Cardiff, all without a win. I mean, Newcastle, I understand completely because um, they have had a really horrible start. I wouldn't say the same necessarily of Huddersfield, and I wouldn't say the same of Cardiff. They've had games, Cardiff, where they should have not should have won, but if perhaps they have, uh, or, or you know they they would have identified as games that were winnable, I guess, and um, you know I think that's that'll be disappointing a little bit. But Burnley are getting back to being solid again. Um, you know, one nil wins were you know one goal wins were the staple diet of Burnley last season, and it was something that they were they were shipping too many goals this season, so. I think they'll be fine probably this season, but fine is just fine, isn't it really? Uh, Crystal Palace Wolves. Again, I don't really have too much to say about this other than like, man, Crystal Palace were really struggling, and it's only because probably there's three teams who haven't even won a game yet and are massively struggling that we're not even lower in the league. Um, it's going to be a relegation fight again this season for us. Uh, it, it's down 100% to finishing and like as much as Zaha we want him to do everything like he can't and we need a striker you know we need someone else to be a threat and uh, Townsend's a good player but he's not that threat and we, we need a striker and January looks a long way away and I don't even think we're going to do with him then you know I said uh, last time that in terms of strikers, we have four on paper very good strikers. Um, they're just none of them are doing anything right now. Uh, it's terrible. But at this point, I genuinely, genuinely would look to the youth and go, hey, is there someone coming through? And I know there's a few youth prospects who are pretty good. And, and I honestly would give them a game or two because, um, uh, I mean, I think maybe I'm being harsh on Wickham here because he has come back from a long injury and he hasn't played hardly anything. Um, but Benteke looks absolutely shot. Ayu doesn't look like maybe he needs a bit of more time to settle in. To be fair, and Sorloth doesn't look like he's ever going to score a goal in the Premier League. To be fair, um, nine million wasted there. Wolves, I mean, it's good, good win for them. Definitely, um, you know, pushes them up to seventh. Fifteen points from eight games. They will be delighted with that. Absolutely. And you know, they are looking good. Um, sometimes promoted teams do have a bit of a burst.
first and then you know, fall back down a little bit once the maybe adrenaline of the Premier League hits in and I don't know if that's something that's going to happen to Wolves or not but um, they, I think they just look like they're playing well I think maybe this is the concerning part of it if you look at the teams around them they've all scored a lot more goals especially the teams above them and while they've had been very good defensively um, you, know, you worry about how that's going to work so yeah if they can get their scoring boots on a little bit more I think they're going to be they're going to be really you know, a really strong established Premier League team if they can keep I guess their owners keep interest because I guess that's maybe a worry as well um, Leicester Everton 2-1 to Everton Leicester are just a funny team a bit like Everton really I think this is exactly the places they deserve to be they're just I mean you can look at Leicester they are the winner they lose you know Everton are just a bang average aren't they really um, you know definitely in terms of their goal differences and stuff like that and you know they're, they're just teams which on paper are much better than their positions but for whatever reason it's just not quite clicking properly and I think Everton are having a little bit of a turn after a dreadful run uh, unfortunately they're playing Palace next typical um, but yeah that, that win against Fulham was really solid and I think that's a really good away win to Leicester so um, they've done, they're doing pretty well um, Bernard's come in and, and, and done quite well the last couple of weeks a couple of assists um, he only played two minutes and got an assist um, so I guess once he maybe gets the fitness or gets used to it things he looks like he could be pretty good for them actually uh, could be a cheeky uh, punt for your fantasy football team I don't know how much he is but um, could be could be I think the only surprise in the Spurs Cardiff game was that they, the Spurs didn't score more goals they scored this goal pretty early on and kind of thought they'd push on then maybe Kane I saw a lot of people captain Kane <laughs> totally reasonable like I mean no one's going to be you know going oh why on earth did you do that but it just sometimes doesn't happen does it um, Kane's having a weird season like on paper he scored five goals in eight games it's not shabby at all but it just doesn't feel like he's clicking that much you can see here He's played nearly full match every single game for the opening game of the season. You know, he says, I don't need a rest. He says that. He says, I'm not, I don't feel tired. I mean, it's going to catch up with him eventually, isn't it? Whether it's going to catch up in an injury or whether it's going to catch up in, um, you know, just general fatigue, I don't know. But that's not great, I guess, um, for him. Cardiff, I mean, kind of a bit similar to Palace like scoring goals is a problem for them um, you know Palace have only scored five goals admittedly that's four more than we had at this point last season um, but um, you know the five goals puts us down there with you know the, the bottom three in terms of you know how low a scorers we are and I think Cardiff as well like Cardiff Huddersfield and Newcastle they got that got common with Crystal Palace where it's like solid teams I think on paper like defensively pretty solid and, and all round fairly solid teams but um, just don't have that goal scoring machine that's why I'm so I think it's such a massive mistake that Newcastle let Dwight Gale go to West Brom um, I would have Dwight Gale over Rondon any day of the week I think Dwight Gale is a much more competent striker and if he was given time I think he'd be a Premier League striker um, I look at West Brom with Gale and Rodriguez I know it's a championship but the championship's a tough league and they are just smashing goals in so I really think I really really rate Gale I wish Palace had not sold him again um, he was just a real he, was a, he had just an eye for goal I think he would be doing well in the Palace side right now another player we let go but there you go what are you going to do but um, yeah so it surprised me when Newcastle let him go but there you go so Cardiff I think they're looking a bit doomed aren't they 17 goals conceded for uh, scored same as Huddersfield it's, it's not looking good uh, Bournemouth uh, putting 
for Palace Watford in, in what really was a massive surprise, I think, for everyone. I thought this would be a pretty tough game where Bournemouth had dropped a few points this season was because they um, were playing against some very physical sides and obviously Watford are a very physical side so it surprised me that they couldn't get anything out of this but you know, B Bournemouth are looking really good this season I think Brooks, I'm really really rating him I think he's looking great Wilson and King also both looking really good up front, really solid and um, yeah, Bournemouth could, are they finally going to have that breakout season? They, they often go through spells where they do quite well and they play good attractive football so they do get people's attention but um, are they actually going to have that consistent run and, and finish the season in a way which um, you know, it, it, they're going to get some reward for, for the way they play like a cup or uh, maybe even Europa League plays something like that and you know they are uh, in the Europa League places right now so you never know you never know you have to feel like maybe some other teams might come back strongly but if they can keep it up then I don't see why not and Watford I think Watford are going to move around mid-table and, and generally just stay there I think that they're good enough that they will cause a few upsets this season uh, if teams are not at their best against them and I think they're good enough that they're going to comfortably stay in the Premier League but I, I don't think their early season form was indicative of where they were going to end up at the end of the season, to be fair. Uh, Man United, Newcastle. Wow. What a game. What a game. Um, so this was the uh, late kickoff, the 5.30 kickoff on the Saturday. And, uh, Matt, I mean, we could be here all day talking about Newcastle, couldn't we? Uh, well, Newcastle and Man United, to be fair. Um, you know, if you don't know the story behind this game, Newcastle go 2-0 up shocked Man United I think it was in like 17 minutes something like that Mourinho does some weird things with substitutions he brings on Mata uh, for Bally who was playing central defence Mata moves to midfield and he puts McTominay in central defence in about a four I mean that that's up there with some FIFA stuff you know <laughs> uh, but um, yeah they managed to bring it back like it was like what the 90th they scored the third goal to win the game. Sanchez, uh, Mata with a great free kick. Martial with a good goal. Um, and, and I feel so sorry for Newcastle because they put a shift in there and they deserved something out of that game. And, you know, that game for Man United, is that going to be a turning point for them? Is that going to be a turning point for Mourinho? Or is this just a, a case of a better team eventually overcoming uh, a, an inferior team? It, it's time will tell. There's been so much going on in the paper. There was the report that Mourinho was going to get fired no matter what the result was. I mean, that hasn't happened at the time of me recording this video. Um, maybe if Newcastle had beaten Man United 2-0, Man United hadn't done anything. Who knows? I mean, does a club like Man United sack a manager within the first eight games of the season, having just given him a contract extension, you know, pre-season? Um, that's a tough question, isn't it? who is going to be the first manager to get the second Premier League because I guarantee you we won't be finishing with the same 20 managers we started with <laughs> excuse me so I mean, I've spoken about Mourinho many times on here I've said many times that I don't think he's the right fit for Man United he um, he's just not the right personality for that club like, I think he fits in better at a small slightly more underdoggy type club uh, I don't think he did well at Real either and that's you know no coincidence but at the end of the day I think he has made you know, his best chance of getting into a Champions League position this season um, I know people might not think that's true but he's experienced I mean who else are you going to bring in people keep going sit down bring in sit down where's it what's it he's not doing get him in quick before someone else gets him this guy's had zero management experience in the Premier League. I know what you're saying. Um, Sari's coming to Chelsea, done a brilliant job there. You know, Pep came in, well, it did take Pep a season or so, but, you know, oh, we want someone to, you know, maybe build and sit down to the guy. And, you know, Courtney Dilly won three European Cups. And I, I don't think he's the 
he's not your hope, basically. Um, you know, he's not the... Oh, God. There we go. Uh, he's not your... So I just need to adjust this slightly. Okay, I can't apparently. Never mind. Um, yeah, I don't think he's Man United's hope. I just, I just don't see it. I don't see him being able to come in and turn around that team. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But I, I think it would be very foolish and very costly for Man United to get, Marine, get rid of Mourinho. Um, and I don't think he's going to quit either. By the way, I don't think he's ever quit. Even when things were really bad at Chelsea, like they were much worse. I think much more toxic. Um, I still think this team is playing for him. I don't think he's lost the team or the dressing room yet. Um, I think sometimes some of the stuff in the papers is overhyped because of Mourinho's mannerisms and personality and him being so grumpy and grouchy. Um, uh, I think Man United can still finish in the Champions League place. It will be tough for them. They're eighth at the minute. Five points off that fourth place and Arsenal are flying. You know, Liverpool are great, Chelsea are great, Man City are great. But um, they've, on paper, they've got it all. Man United, you know, their defence on paper is not as bad as people make out. Despite putting McTominay at the back, I mean, that was a weird one. Um, I, I generally thought, I, I was watching on TV and I had to go to work, so I was listening to it on the radio on the way to work. And like Stuart Pearce was co-commentating, he just could not work out what Mourinho was doing. Like, he, he just couldn't understand why McTominay was playing in defence. Um, I mean, I kind of understand in a way. I'm sure Stuart Pearce does in a way as well. Like, you know, he wants more of a ball playing player in defence because he knows Newcastle are going to sit back on 2 0. So, you know, Man United are going to have a lot of possession, which they did. So they want someone who's comfortable with possession. The problem is Newcastle were counter attacking and they really could have got a couple more. Um, as I said, they were very unlucky. Um, but, you know, Man United, I guess, you know, just. They have a lot of qualities and, and they, they, they managed to do it. So you have to say fair play to them, really. Um, but what a match. What a match. That's what the Premier League is, is kind of all about, you know. It really is. Uh, and I guess welcome to the Premier League for Fulham here. Absolutely battered by Arsenal. I said from the very beginning, you can go back and have a look at my Premier League prediction video. I said Fulham, they've spent all their money on strikers and attacking players and no money in defence. They did slightly after that, I guess. They bought Alfie Mawson, but still, it wasn't enough and their defence did not look good and they really got hurt by Arsenal. Lacazette and Aubameyang are looking brilliant together. You have to play those two together. Like I, I think I said that as well. Like that People were saying, oh, you can't, you know, there's no room for both of them. You can't play both of them. you got to. Like, there's so many players underachieving at Arsenal and these two are going out firing on all cylinders and I'm a firm believer that football tactics are one thing and that you know managers should have a set way to play and you know you have to have this philosophy but you also have to work with what you've got and at the end of the day if you've got two really good strikers uh, world class strikers on your on your you know on your books you can't play them you know because who are you playing instead of Lacazette or Aubameyang, a, a much more inferior player, a, a player who's not going to hurt the opposition as much as them. So I don't know if maybe the big match is against the top six, he'll play those two up front. I would love him to. I'd love to see that really go for it. But that's nine wins in a row for Arsenal, not just in the league, but you know, Europa League, Cups and things like that. Ramsey getting a goal as well, despite him, you know, perhaps leaving maybe. Um, so yeah, really, really interesting uh, match, and I think Fulham, they're looking like they're struggling, you know, I think they're going to beat the teams around them, so I think they might be okay, but they are so wide open against the bigger teams, you know, you see that, like 3-0, 3-0, 5-1, they're, they're wide open at the back, and uh, you know, the, the teams around them might not be able to capitalise on that, and you know, Fulham are a good attacking side, but they're, they, they're in trouble, I think Fulham they're two points out of the relegation zone and they've got Cardiff next and if Cardiff gets something out of that game yeah, even a win that if they get a win there, that's really seriously bad news for Fulham uh, but fair play to Arsenal they are right
rising up the table now. Um, what are they like? Uh, fourth? Yeah, fourth. You know, they lost the first two games. They've now won six in the Premier League since their 19 goals. <gasps> Defensively, you can obviously see that's a major, major issue for them. Um, you know, three, five, three, you can see they're last with ten. Like, they're, in my opinion, they're nowhere near good enough at the back to be able to compete in the title race. Um, there have been worse defences which have won the league, <laughs> to be fair. But I just I just don't see it with how strong Liverpool and Man City are on paper. I don't see Arsenal being able to um, win the league this season. So, yeah. But very positive. Very positive, you know. Very positive. So, um, yeah, you know, Champions League, I guess for them, maybe a cup. That would be a great, great season for Emery. Um, Unai Emery. And uh, then push on from there, maybe. Uh, Southampton, Chelsea, 3 0. Chelsea, I could only ever see a Chelsea win here, really. They've been flying. Hazard's been flying. Um, you know, really good goals from him. Uh, Barkley, uh, it was a good goal from him. Like, he's getting forward a lot more. Giroud set them up. And then Morata scoring a, a really nice finish from a Hazard assist as well. And uh, yeah, just solid. I mean, Southampton were never at it. Um, solid and easy win for Chelsea. Um, Hazard talking afterwards, saying about how you know he wakes up one day dreaming of Real Madrid, wakes up the next wanting to stay at Chelsea. A lot of people kind of criticised him for saying that, and how you know not that professional, or maybe he shouldn't be saying that. Um, especially kind of mid-season. Um, I personally think it's fairly refreshing for a Premier League player to actually tell the truth, and I can only imagine it's the truth. I don't think you'd say that if it wasn't. Um, you know, a lot of people criticised Wilf Saar a few weeks back for saying about how, you know, he was so unhappy with the treatment he's getting, and people criticised him, but listen, I'd rather that than the same old boring spiel you get from footballers, like, oh, it's a team, oh, I thought as a team we did so well, and we did this, and it's just all you know written down by some press officer somewhere for them to say and every time you see their twitter like great game thanks for the support <laughs> it's something like that it's so mundane and like you can tell it's written by someone else so i thought it was quite refreshing for him to come out and say something like that and i totally understand it you know he's getting to that point where he's gonna have one big move left is chelsea gonna offer him a contract which he thinks is probably fair and more to the point are they gonna be challenging not only for the league, but for the you know Champions League and, and you know competitions like that, back where you know they used to be, perhaps. Um, how is Sari going to do for the rest of the season? Because we know, you know, well Hazard may have found a manager he loves playing under, you know, attacking football manager. We know what Chelsea are like, and if Sari doesn't get results, you know, if he has, goes through a bad spell, or he maybe doesn't get Champions League football this season, I think Chelsea will. By the way, but if he doesn't, where does that leave him? You know. Will they go back to a you know, Conte-like figure, which Hazard you know, didn't really like? It's so many questions that I don't think you can really look into it that much, to be fair. Um, a lot is going to depend on, I think, on Chelsea. And I can understand Hazard. Chelsea are in the Europa League. He doesn't want to be playing in that. He wants to be playing those Champions League nights. You know, He wants to be playing for those big clubs. And um, he's capable of doing it without a doubt. I don't think there's any team in the world which would not be improved with Hazard in it. So, yeah. I think he's got two years left on his contract, so it's not really like panic stations for Chelsea, but probably need to start thinking about what they're going to offer him to stay. I'm sure they are, but you know. And then Man City, Liverpool. Again, this was the big game. I was really looking forward to this. It didn't live up to expectations, did it? Let's be honest. I don't think we had a shot on target until like the 60th minute, and there wasn't much else apart from right at the end when Morris had the penalty to win it, you know, for Man City for a famous win at Anfield and he blasts it over. Wow. Um, yeah, that's not good, is it? Definitely was a penalty, by the way. Um, and yeah, you know, a, probably a good result for both those teams. They probably would have wanted a draw. They've both got, you know, teams they're probably going to be uh, up next. And, uh, yeah, all three of those teams now on equal points. Just goal difference separating them, which is cool. I, I really hope we get a three-horse race, not just a two-horse race. I mean, you know, Arsenal are only two points behind, I guess, as well. So maybe we're going to get a four-horse race. I don't know. 
and Spurs as well. You know, it, it's pretty close at the top. You know, I, I I do think Man City and Liverpool will push on, and it will be between those two. But I'd be delighted if more teams get involved in that. That'd be great. It'd be really good for the Premier League as a whole. Not much else really to talk about in this game. I don't think both teams are really firing in their best right now. I mean, even at like 70%, they're both good enough to beat most of the other teams in the league. But, um, you know, when they're facing each other, it, it kind of petered out a little bit. As I said, it was not a classic game in any way, shape or form. So, a bit disappointed there. But, you know, we now go into an international break. Um, so, no games till the 20th of October. Um, some interesting games here, you know, Chelsea, Man United. Um, otherwise, I think most teams are kind of playing similar, like Cardiff, Fulham, that's a pretty big game. Newcastle, Brighton, West Ham, Spurs, you know, Wolves, Watford, you'd fancy Wolves for that one probably. Huddersfield, Liverpool, that's, you know, a tough game for Liverpool to go there and win, but the sort of game they have to win if they want to win the league. Because uh, you know, probably know Man City are going to be Burnley, probably, you know. Um, Palace at Everton, that's a big game for both sides. Palace on a real slump right now. Um, you know, draw, loss, loss, and losses against clubs around us, you know. So, yeah, we, we've played some, we've had, we had an easy run, and we've come out of it with four points in the last five games. It's not good at all. So, yeah, not good at all. And Arsenal, Leicester, you know, I'd fancy Arsenal for that one big time in the Emirates on a Monday night. Interesting. Very interesting. I have no idea what I'm going to do with my team. I'm obviously not going to touch it until after the international break because uh, you don't know who's going to get injured. The players I'd possibly look to transfer. I think I'll keep Loris for West Ham away, potentially. Um, I think I'd probably captain Aguero. And I'd probably keep... I fancy Chelsea to beat Man United. I'd probably drop Zaha and bring someone else in there and then maybe keep the rest. Uh, we'll see. Put in Van Dyke. I would imagine Van Dyke would go in instead of maybe Jorginho. Um, Mendy as well, actually, would go in for probably Wan Bissaka. I don't fancy our chance against Everton. Uh, I don't fancy Southampton against Bournemouth either. So, yeah, I think that's probably. And then I'd probably swap out Zaha for someone and see where we go from there but yeah anyway guys thanks for watching as always uh my pleasure let me know what you think let me know how you're doing uh, i'm you know, happy to know and if you want to join the league as i said before i always forget to put the number in the comment in the description so um you're on your own there but if you go to i think the second uh, week two it's in there and there's also a community post on the community tab about it as well so you can have a look there but till then guys thank you so much for watching um it's my pleasure as always. See you soon. Bye-bye.